Anish, how are you? Good, how are you doing? I'm doing okay. I'm doing okay. So we're going to talk about another controversy. Uh, the p-value controversy uh, <laughs> is uh, the editorial written by uh, uh, John Ioannidis in JAMA um, a couple of weeks ago. Give me your thoughts. Yeah, so, so I'm going to summarize the trial uh, uh, briefly that John... Not the trial, the... Uh, Editorial. Yeah. Oh, right, sorry, the uh, the perspective yeah. that he had. So, Dr. Unidas is uh, is uh, well known uh, ever since. Uh, well, for a long time, he's not Stanford, which is in your neighborhood, correct? Uh, um, yes, yes. Although you know, I never leave the city. Well, it's, uh, to me, the city is like you know, the peninsula is like a foreign country. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. So, so his his uh, article uh, uh, looked at uh, whether or not the uh, uh, p value um, uh, looked at a recent proposal by five folks to uh, uh, lower the threshold of uh, the p value from 0.05 to 0 0.005 and so there's this is you know e echoing this uh, many many different uh, attacks on the p value um, and so you know the issue is of course that um, uh, he brings up many issues in this. He talks about how statistical significance and clinical significance. Um, uh, he talks, he notes that, um, you know, there's all, many, many problems with p-values and that p-values by themselves can't be used to decide on causal inference. He goes on to note, he goes on then to say that decreasing the threshold will take care of uh, some of the noise um, uh, that is seen, meaning there's lots and lots of false positive, essentially studies that are uh, out there. And that uh, um, if you decrease the threshold, yes, you will um, take care of much of the noise. And yes, there may be some net benefit. But he does go on to say, and I think a lot of folks on Twitter certainly seem to say that he is asking to decrease the p-value to 0.05. He's actually saying something. He's saying that, yes, there may be some net benefits to decreasing the p-value to 0.05. But doing that misses the point. Uh, we need to forget, forget about the p-value. We need to focus on... Um, uh, 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 the treatment effect size and uh, clinically uh, what matters. He does discuss a number of solutions. He says, you know, we could do away with the threshold completely. Um, he says that, uh, um, you know, the problem with lowering the p-value just means that you will give a new target uh, so for, for researchers to game the system. Um, and he says, you know, there's no, and he doesn't provide for, for a guy who says pretty strident things. Uh, he doesn't really provide a solution. He just says that, you know what? We all need to try to increase our statistical education uh, more to avoid uh, misinter mis uh, right. misinterpretations. Uh, more statistics, more statistics. Yes, yes. the answer yeah. lies in more statistics. Exactly, more statistics. I don't know. Yeah, I, 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 uh, that's not how I read it. Uh, I, yeah. I really thought. I, I agree. He's hedging. He's hedging because yeah. he knows that that to recommend a p-value of zero point zero zero five uh, is kind of silly. But on the other hand, I think he does. I mean, he says, you know, it's a rather simple, simple it's a temporizing solution. He says, temporizing solution, you know, yes. Temporizing. And then he says, it would, you know, it, it would weed out a bunch of noise uh, from the research and, and it would be, so I think overall on the balance, I think he's in favor of this. He doesn't come out, uh, you know, uh, saying it, you know, uh, straightforwardly, but I think he, um, I think he's in favor of it. And, uh, and of course, the rest is like, you know, more, more education, you know, uh, less bias and, and less, uh, but not the same old song. Um, but the problem with these guys, you know, these uh, EBM purists is they, they really, they have nowhere to go. Uh, EBM is, as far as I'm concerned, is, is sort of uh, flailing. <laughs> the, whole, the whole doctrine of EBM is flailing. Everybody knows it, but they don't know where to go. Um, and so they blame the p-value, they blame conflicts of interest, they blame everything. Uh, but what they don't blame really is the, is the whole idea of EBM. Um, so let me give, you know, Ioannidis made his claim to fame, you sort of emerged and became a superstar. Um, I think 10, you know, 10 years ago in 2005, he had a paper saying all research or most, most you know, why most of the research is wrong. So he's, he's, he's echoing, uh, Michelle, he's echoing you. No. <laughs> How he, is, he, is, he is going after I, EBM, I, just like you go after EBM. It is, his solution is different from your solution. Yeah, but I mean, for him, there's not enough EBM. I mean, EBM, he's trying to save EBM from itself. I'm trying to destroy EBM. So he's trying to save EBM from itself. 
So he's saying uh, all research is wrong because for him, the, the, the main criterion of, of, uh, uh, of true, I mean, so all research is false. He used the term false because for him, the tr what's true and false is what is rep reproducible or not. But that's, uh, that's, that's, silly. I mean, that's really a silly um, because nothing is reproducible. You can never reproduce anything when you're talking about biology and, and uh, reality. It's always, there's always, when you do something another time, there's always, uh, um, you can make arguments that whatever you've done again is the same or whatever you're, you've done again is different. You can make both claims. Both claims are equally true. That whatever, if you, if you, take a, if you run a clinical trial and yeah. then the next day you run the exact same clinical trial, you'll have you know, your, your, your results and you can, they're not gonna be identical because nothing is identical in, in life. It's never identical. So there's always a claim to say that it's reproducible and there's always a claim where you could say, no, it's not, it's not reproducible, there, there's a difference. And so that's when they, they bring in the statistical tools, the statistical tools that are supposed to give us some kind of um, um, backing for making the claim that yes, it's different, or yes, it's you know, the same, or yes, it's reproducible, or yes, and whatnot. But nevertheless, these statistical things are not, uh, you know, they're not, they, don't, they don't give you truth or falsity. You know, they, they give you a little sense, a little quantitative sense of uh, how far off you may be straying, but there's always judgment. There's always judgment no matter what. And you can't get rid of judgment. And the, the whole idea that we, we want to get rid of judgment, we don't want to be biased, uh, is, is kind of false and silly. So, so I, <laughs> I, I hope I've, I've persuaded you that I'm not uh, uh, with him. Uh, we're both going to opposite directions, in opposite directions. And, and I think it's, uh, this idea of that things need to be reproducible and that's going to be the main criterion uh, for truth is, is, uh, is right. Complicated. Right. So I guess the problem is that you have, you have these systems that are incredibly complex and what happens if you have uh, an uninformed or a prior, you know, a, an uninformed prior or a prior, you know, meaning what if you're in a space mm -hmm. where you don't know whether drug X or intervention X is going to help the, the patient. Um, so, right. So then what, how, do you, how do you go about figuring out whether that intervention is beneficial to patients? So I'll give you, you know, yeah. so, so epinephrine makes blood pressure and heart rate go up. Mm -hmm. um, uh, certainly, you know, that is, that is something that's true the vast majority of the time, though not true every single time, as you're mm -hmm. pointing out, right? But that knowledge, how did we acquire that knowledge? I mean, With where did that come from? With experience. Right. With now, so that, and, with, so that, and, with, that, with, and with judgment, with judgment. Right. First of all, we say, well, we judge that certain animals can are similar enough to humans, right? I mean, right. animals are not identical to humans, so right. that's a judgment, right? We make a right. judgment, and we say we're going to test the, the you know a medication in animals and see what what the effects right. are, right? right? So, but but there's a judgment that goes right. into saying, well, animals are close enough to humans, and we're going right. to you know right. translate that. Right. Number two, then you test it carefully. In, in humans, you know, you do some safety uh, uh, right. trials, but they can, they can be single arm. I mean, they can you, just a, a case series and, and you, you get on the basis of what you, you knew before from your own experience. Right. And then if you're, if you're honest, you have right. a reputation to defend, whether you're, uh, whether you're a scientist, whether you're a clinician, whether you're a, a company, a pharmaceutical company, right. Right. whatever, you have a reputation to defend. So you're going to make a claim. Right. And you, if, if, if the re reputation is important, the claim has to, to right. match what yeah. you know so i gave you something yes so i gave you something that was yeah. very simple meaning meaning right you know from ample experience that you and i and many mm -hmm. interns at this point even interns have uh, have had um any randomized control trial that says that epinephrine is is is, is useless you know the the prior is so strong you know when patients are when blood pressures are dropping away and you're trying to resuscitate patients, the prior is so strong that epinephrine does this, it doesn't matter, right? Right, but number, but if, number two, but the other thing is that uh, the clinical trials will also isolate um, one or two outcomes of interest. Right, right. But you, you may use epinephrine for a, a variety right. of reasons, or you, may, you can use anything for a wide variety of reasons, right? right? right. Which may not be, so if the clinical trial says useless, 
Right. Uh, you know, useless for what? You know. Yes. Yeah, no. No. Yeah. Yeah. So no, I, I'm not arguing yeah. to do a, a trial. Right. With no. Anything. No. I, right. You're right. I'm right. giving you. I'm, I was just giving right. something where the the prior is huge for all of medicine. That hey, epinephrine raises blood pressure, and mm-hmm. we shouldn't. You know, whatever. But but suppose we take a space which is much different. Say we take um, this idea that. Uh, we had that patients with high HDLs uh, are, uh, you know, don't have right. much cardi- coronary disease. And, and now you have a drug that works on some mechanism that raises HDL. It would, you know, so uh, how, how do you go about, how, how do you go about testing that other than what happened, which is, yes, we went through a bunch of trials. We went through the safety trials and, uh, and people died. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> right. But, but then, you know, you finally did an outcome trial and it turns out that artificially raising HDL by the mechanisms that we have, available to us today appears to be a dead end. How do you, you know, so there are spaces perhaps where yeah. I don't know how you get away from. I mean, I'm not saying, I'm not saying that, um, I'm not saying not to do the trials. Yeah. But I'm, I'm, all I'm saying is that you can't uh, make everything hinge on, on a trial giving you an answer or trying saying So, oh, yeah. you know, the company, the company that makes the, uh, the um, HDL, you know, the, the, or Cetafib or whatever it's called, you yeah. know, these medications, you know, if, if, it were, if we lived in the same world, yeah. um, uh, those companies would want to be extremely transparent because they want to convince the doctor that they have right. um, uh, um, a medication that is not going to make, it's not the medication that immediately makes the patient feel better, right? You, yeah, it's not, yeah. you don't, you don't, you're not yeah, yeah, feeling yeah. badly because your HDL is low, right? right? right. So right. they need to convince the doctor, the community of physicians, <clears throat> that they have a product that actually makes a difference. So they're going to run the trial. They're going to have an incentive themselves to run the trial. Right. But they right. should run it to convince the physician. Right now, they run it to convince the FDA, right? And the FDA says, we need P of less than 0.05, right? That's right. The, the only thing that the FDA can, right. can, can use, right? They, they, that's, they, 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 they live and die. So it's life and death by the P value, right? Yes. Because the clinician may decide, well, okay, you know, the, the pharmaceutical company may, may give it its best shots, you know, produce something, tell what the data is, tell what the p-value is, give all the statistics. And then the clinician can decide, well, this is good enough for me or my patient, mm-hmm. or it's not good enough for me or my patient. You know, it, it turns out that yeah. the effect but Michelle, is small don't you think- or whatnot, and, and, or there's harm, or even if there's harm, I mean, there could be, you know, I mean, you know, it's yeah. a variety of things. Yeah, go ahead. But Michelle, don't you think that a lot of physicians um, don't necessarily, I mean, a lot of physicians don't read the read every trial, correct? A lot of physicians yeah. are looking for some thought leaders in the community who are, you know, right. uh, to, 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 make a, to make a decision. So in this case, I mean, they are doing this to convince physicians. The FDA has, of course, stepped in to regulate and said, hey, you know, these are the parameters because yeah. Regulatory agencies need need. I mean, what are regulatory agencies going to do? They have to say that they have to draw a line. That's what regulatory right. agencies I mean, do. They draw some line somewhere. I mean, in, in a way, physicians. Again, if we lived in the same world, if we lived yeah. in the same world, physicians who don't read, you know, or who don't you know think too much, should have less impact and less decision making yeah. power than physicians who do. And if yes. if if they lived in the same if we lived in the same world, it may be that the physicians who who are you know, better at making sound yeah. clinical judgment would then employ, you know, would rise to the top, have maybe a structure. Yeah. And I don't know, some kind of the way it was, you know, uh, I always but, love my favorite example yeah. is uh, yeah. the Mayo Clinic, you know, back yeah. in the old days. So you had the, the important guys who knew how to make decisions. Yeah. You know, they would hire, you know, they had hirelings yeah. and, and the yeah. doctors who don't. Right now in our system, you get an MD and you pass the, the, the exam mm. Forget it. Then you have the same power, the same power yeah. as everybody else, and uh, and and so that's so again. But so, that, that's going to be so, a hard so, thing for. Yes, it is. It is. But uh, the point is that yeah. we're trying to get the p-value or the statistics or whatnot to the BM to to correct a problem that has a completely different cause, right? And uh, and, and, that, and so that never really works uh, all that well. I mean, it just it just creates its its own set of. Uh, Right. So, so you think you think you think the, the the major meaning. So, in this in this trial that pharmacy companies would be running, right? Uh, how like how how would they have convinced you, Doctor Shahad, in in a world which was sane, that you know this trial does or this 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 drug does or does not? Uh, right. Uh, 
Well, it, it, they would have and, shown. And by the way, isn't there, isn't there, sorry, one, one follow up. You can, it, it, isn't there an incentive by nefarious actors to, again, you don't have access to the actual primary data. You know, I mean, isn't there a lot of then a significant yeah, you, incentive you to could, fudge the data? No, but you could. I mean, uh, there is, but it's, it's, if we live, I mean, there's competition. So they have an incentive, incentive to be transparent. Uh, they would have an incentive to be transparent if it if if we so. if we lived in the same world yes because they would have a competitor that might say well listen these guys are hiding their data we're going to have auditors so so you will have I auditors see. you know yeah. re reputable auditors that that will say you know we're going to audit yeah. the 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 data of of uh, pharmaceutical yeah. company x right now there, there's no such thing so right. so um so that, so they have an incentive to be transparent if they want to stay in business long term and, and build their re reputation. Right now, their, their own the whole goal is to to show P of zero point zero five and pass through. But they would have to show. I mean, if if they would have to show to convince me, uh, <coughs> in world they would have to show me outcome data, right? So yeah. that means that they would have yeah. to follow patients long enough, yeah. and then they would have yeah. the same that was well, discovered in the clinical trial, yeah. trial would, yeah. would be would be discovered, and then I would say, hey, may. Uh, not not all that impressive, you know. And uh, uh, so, yeah, I, I think we, I think clearly it, it seems, and it, and, it, and I mean, I I, I imagine the EBM. Uh, I imagine most folks would agree uh, that that this 0 0.05 p value threshold that has been implemented and and, and is accepted as you know uh, it has godlike powers for journals and and whatnot. Right. And even what you write, right? The peer the peer the peer reviewers. Will not let you as an author necess necessarily write a conclusion or discussion a certain way right. unless your p is 0.04, right? Uh, or less, sorry, less than 0.05. Right. If your p is 0.06, yeah. you know it's a sham. If, if it's right. 0.04, there's there's hey. a significant. It's in it. And imagine that. So so you're talking about the average doctor or the doctor who doesn't read not being able to make, but it hasn't changed. I mean, because right now, you know, everybody should know that the p value of 0 0.05 really doesn't tell you the whole. But the, you know. But the world, the academic world, works as if that was the end all be all of everything. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, but I think I think I think right. Ionides has has done a, a wonderful job since his 2005 paper and kind of throwing egg on the faces of uh, this idea that uh, uh, there was a, that truth was so easy as a p of 0.05, um, uh, right? Meaning he, I mean, he has. I mean, I know you disagree with right. his solutions, which is his solution is. <laughs> Is is Even better more, statistics, right? Right, better statistics. Better statistics. Your solution is that hey, this tells us that this is uh, this is baloney. But and when we should abandon this path altogether and go back right. to you know judgment and whatnot. But but certainly, I mean, I think there's very little. There can be very little argument with the statement that uh, uh, using this artificial threshold of p of p of point of uh, a p of point of five that is uh, has primacy for decades now has clearly made us all dumber because. Yes. Because what happens? I agree. Right? I mean, I was just at a, I was just at a, a, a grand rounds, and uh, there were all these there were all these statements that were said um, with great certainty. Meaning, these are the pillars. Like, this is what we believe. We believe that uh, you know that uh, uh, what was it that um, uh, atrial fibrillation uh, uh, and uh, um, uh, 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 people who have atrial fibrillation that's discovered twenty years later uh, have more dementia than people that don't have atrial fibrillation, right? Um, and you know, when you actually look at the actual trial, this was a statement, this was a take home message. Mm -hmm. If you have AFib, there's a higher chance you'll have dementia, right? And based on the, you know, the P was 0 0.0 something, uh, but the actual score was the Z score where one is, you know, one is a standard deviation. The actual effect size was 0.1. So in 20 years, you know, they showed in these thousands and thousands of patients that a 0.1 difference uh, between AFib and no AFib uh, was a very significant difference, right? And based on that, that room that this, you know, very smart guy is talking to walks away saying, ah, you know, with, with certainty, we can say that people who have AFib causes, uh, uh, yeah. causes, uh, causes right. more dementia. So I think we've definitely become dumber in dumber. that sense. I agree. <laughs> I agree with you. I, I agree with you because the, the whole idea of, of that whole movement of EBM, quantification, uh, uh, rigor, quote unquote, the whole idea is that um, we as clinicians are incapable of, you know, our, our judgment is, is uh, uh, because of the potential for bias, our judgment is not trustworthy. And therefore, 
we should look to the data to tell us what, what to think. Yes, and when you, yes. and if you think that way, then, then your, your judgment atrophies, your, your capacity to judge atrophies. Right. Right. right and that's what's right. happened, you know, over the 20, yeah. 30 years of, yeah. of EBM, we've, we've atrophied our, our capacity for judgment. Right. And, um, and, um, and so, that, so that's a problem. And then number two, another thing that I, I think, uh, going back to the paper here, he talks about, you know, this, this, the slew of re uh, research that's coming out. And the problem is that research funding, so nobody wants to talk about research funding. The people who, who fund research are completely unaccountable. So, so there's research being funded left and right by the NIH, okay? And, and the people who fund it, it's uh, somebody else's money, right? It's taxpayers' money, right? And so they're unaccountable. So now you have all kinds of papers. And, and so, you know, we need statistics to sort it out. But no, that's not really what we need. We need the people who fund the research to be accountable for their funding, right? So, so this, again, I'm, I'm a total heretic extremist. You know, I should be sent to the gulag. But my point here is that this whole idea of public funding of research is extremely harmful. And that's, you know, and... But, but public yeah, funding is without bias, Michelle. What's that? Public Unbiased. funding is yes. so, you know, you're... Noble. It's noble because the private sector, they're, they're motivated by profit, profit whereas the, yeah. our public servants and people who sit on NIH uh, section uh, yeah. uh, committees, you know, are, are completely, uh, you know, yeah. clean. There, and, there's, and, no, there's, no, there's no motivated yeah. reasoning in the, uh, in the public sector, uh, right? Uh, right, right. It's, I, it's are noble. you saying... Are you saying that, that, that folks that do research at NIH have, have, may have some type of an agenda? Yeah, may have a... Don't you see, when they, don't you see the, the, the halos that they have when they're walking around? <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, I, I was, um, we'll, we'll bring this up, and I, I know we're, we're straying a little bit from the, uh, from the Inner's paper, but, but this, um, getting to this point about bias in, in, in research and who should do it and it should only come through public, you know, it's an excellent point that you make. Um, you know, there's this study about uh, hypertension in barbershops. And it was, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure, I hope I'm not getting that wrong. I'm pretty sure it was a NIH funded uh, study done by somebody, uh, again, local, clo close, closer to you than close to me, the LA County, I think. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, the idea was that, uh, 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 that pharmacists plus barbershops, uh, plus barbers in, in these local barbershops could control hypertension better than, you know, conventional uh, therapy of, uh, you know, expecting men to go to their primary care physicians to get their blood pressure controlled. And, you know, they, they, sh they showed this remarkable difference that if you had pharmacists that were in the barbershop and the barbers were, you know, coaching these folks and whatnot to get their blood pressure checked, there was a 30 millimeter drop in blood pressures versus, a normal, versus like an approximately 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter drop in the normal uh, uh, arm. Um, so impressive, impressive results. But one of the ways they got to those results was that during the trial, right, uh, there were all these changes that they had to make because initially they were like, barbers will measure the blood pressures. Of course, barbers have a day job and, you know, they're, they're, they're there to cut hair. Um, and so they weren't measuring blood pressures. So they changed the trial midway so, so to have the pharmacists take over checking blood pressures, right? Um, so, and, you know, there, there, there also, there was a bunch of folks that weren't recruiting properly. So, you know, they increased the size of the trial. Right. And again, and again, you know, we, we've, we've discussed before in other trials, like the ischemia trial about stable CAD, how, you know, changes to trial design that aren't pre-specified literally results in like, you know, DEFCON 10. And like, you know, there's like nuclear war on Twitter because of that, right? Yeah, right. In this trial, right? Again, the, there's clearly a bias from the researcher and it's okay. Bias is okay. Like bias is what makes us human. There's a bias from the researcher to show that hypertension control locally will work, right? And he's going to do a trial to show this, right? Right, 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 right. exactly, exactly. It requires changing the trial <laughs> protocol midway, he'll do it. And hey, you know what? They, I'm right, they didn't blind the, the, the barbers and <laughs> blind Yeah, right, 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 yeah, yeah. I mean, right. you know, it'd be hard to, yeah, they, they, right. should have, they should have put blindfolds right. on the barbers while they were cutting the hair, right? right. I mean, that would have been right. the best thing, you know, so they didn't know. <laughs> Correct, yeah. But anyway, my, my point is, is that, you know, there's clearly motivated reasoning among all researchers, and that's okay. Um, uh, you know, I guess the, the folks say that the motivations, what the motivations are, are, are what's important. And so, yeah, it's funny that, that certain biases are, are tolerated and other biases are, uh, you know, poo-pooed. Right. Money, money is bad. Money is bad. So if you're doing, I guess if you're doing, I guess th they, their point would be that uh, biases that result in you making more money or your company making more money. Uh, right. Clearly. They, worse research than otherwise. Right. Right. Yeah. Uh, but but of course it, it's it's complicated. But because certainly now nowadays when people make money in healthcare, 
frequently, yeah. unfortunately, is not it's not usually by by honest, transparent means. <laughs> you know, the usually shenanigans. Right. Um, sure. But you're right. I mean, it's not it's not profit itself. If we lived in a sane world, and yeah. now, and now people will say, well, we don't live in a sane world, and therefore x we need p values <laughs> but i don't think i don't think that's uh yeah that's good but, I, but you know i honestly never i didn't read i mean i i you know i i didn't read uh you know this is a paper uh initial paper uh, the paper well not the initial paper the paper that really made a massive splash in terms right of, you know, most published research is is, is false yeah, yeah i mean that, that's that's what it is and then he if you follow a little bit uh, that was his claim his claim it's false quote-unquote false or you know the drug doesn't work or something is false Really, all, the, all they mean is that it's not reproducible. That's the definition of false. And, and then later on, there was a paper I, um, a couple of years ago where then they start hedging about say, yeah, well, reproducibility may not be the end all be all, or there are different ways of thinking about reproducibility. You can reproduce reproducibility of outcomes, <laughs> reproducibility of methods, reproducibility yeah. of conclusions, yeah. this and that, and it's all very complicated. And so they hedge, but, but nevertheless, it's always more quantification, less judgment, but that's wrong. It yeah. is, it's more judgment, but it should be an accountable judgment. So, so if we're going to improve the system, we need to improve towards making people more accountable, but let them decide and judge because, because that's what, how humans operate. That's, that's, yeah. that's the, the reality of, of, uh, of being a human. There's no question. I think Ioannidis would agree with, 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 with certainly me in saying that um, we have done disservice to uh, generations of uh, trainees at this point who, who now you know, uh, who now look to, who, 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 think, who think that truth uh, can be arrived at uh, just through analyzing uh, data, the data and spreadsheets in front of you. Um, yeah, but, he, but he, he was a champion of that. And, and in fact, that first paper, yeah. the, his main beef in the first paper of yeah. 2005, yeah. Uh, had to do with, he didn't, it wasn't calling into question the, the EBM philosophy. It was calling into right, question, right, question right, yes. you know, that certain statistics was, were misunderstood and right. that there was also a lot of conflict of interest and, right. and you know, biases, human right. factor biases and whatnot. Right. So, so for him, you need better statistics, which in my, it means less judgment and more, yeah. more blinders, yeah. uh, really, and, yeah. and less, less conflict of interest and more transparencies. Not really understanding, he doesn't understand where the biases come from. And, and what in the system makes people, really it's the lack of accountability throughout the system, whether it's the academics, the people who fund things, uh, clinicians who get paid not by third parties and they get paid the same, whether you amputate the wrong leg or whether you, you, right. you do the right operation, you get the same, right. you, you file the so, same. And, and, yeah. So flesh, I'm and curious, so flesh, <laughs> flesh, <laughs> so flesh that out for me a little bit. Just you, you're saying, you would like the researchers. Uh, yeah, I can't flesh it. Flesh, I mean, it's going to take, uh, we should make a whole, whole but go oh, ahead. Ask, ask a question. I'll, de I'll decide if we should flesh it out or, or, Maybe, uh, when or, you say, when you say things. that we should, the researchers are doing, it should be more, it should be accountable for right. it. How, how would you, how, how would you, how would you do that? I think the people who fund the research, first of all, should be more accountable. Okay. How would you do that? Well, I would privatize yeah. research. I mean, I wouldn't have the NIH. I wouldn't have a public, uh, unaccountable public bureaucracy found research, mm -hmm. right? People who fund research should be people, you know, pharmaceutical companies or private universities or whatnot, you know, who, or uh, f uh, philanthropists. I mean, the, the way it used to be. So and don't now, you then, and it's always, uh, the, the argument is always, oh, it costs too much now. There's not enough, uh, you know, uh, there's no yeah. way for the private sector to, fund. that's not yeah. true at all. It doesn't, yeah. I mean, now you have, uh, you know, uh, right. Uh, granted, he's kind of crony, but Elon Musk is sending somebody to Mars, right? You know, without, uh, with, you know, with, ostensibly with, with, with uh, private funds, although there's, I'm sure there's a lot of uh, public subsidies, but it's not true. And, and plus, it, plus, it contradicts itself because they say, well, we, we need the public funding for the research because the, the private sector is only motivated by short-term uh, outcomes and they don't have the long view. Uh, the, the truth is, you know, the, the NIH, you know, b b backtracks and, you know, it says, no, now it says, no, no, we need more translation research because, you know, these long view projects, you know, go nowhere. And now we have to, you know, we have to, to show that uh, the world, that our research is actually producing, you know, tangible um, stuff. So I think the, the, the private sector is perfectly uh, capable and, uh, and willing to fund research. So they should be accountable. And if they did, then it, they would hold the researchers more accountable to, to yeah. you know, for their work. And, and ultimately it would be the, you know, ultimately it would be the, for the, the benefit of, of, uh, 
if we're talking about medical right. research, it'd be the, the, the ultimate people holding accountable would be the, would be the patients indirectly, not, not directly right. because they, the patients understand p-value and, and whatnot, but just because the patients understand what's important to them. And, uh, and then you may say, well, patients don't know. They go see uh, you know, uh, acupuncturist and homeopath and whatnot. Well, that's, you know, that's human life. They go, they're going to go see right. homeopath no matter what. You know, and and uh, 50 years of EBM has not changed that. You know, you know, right. the, the homeopaths yeah. are a booming yeah. fact. You know, the yeah. more the two values we put, the more, the, more right. uh, the homeopathic business booms. Right, right. So, yeah. so, two, two, so two, two questions then. If you, uh, if, you have, um, a, uh, if you have all private research, do you not end up with the landscape that we have in, uh, in the media today where you have, you know, folks on the left, folks on the right? You know, there's yeah. a lot of tribalism and both are mouthpieces, not necessarily for what's actually happening, but both are running around giving, you know, opinions and attempting to change things. Uh, they're attempting to influence right. <coughs> folks, not necessarily... Yeah, prob- probably. Uh, probably. In a way that's uh, right. You, you, might, you might have, you might have different, uh, but then, uh, you know, ultimately it's going to be, I mean, there is a consumer to the research at every level. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's a consumer who really uh, should be, should uh, ultimately, you know, is the ultimate uh, uh, accountant, you know, to hold the right. others accountable. So, so whether, you know, the consumer is the patient is going to hold, should hold the, the doctors accountable. Right. Then the doctors are going to consume some kind of medical literature, right? right? And they need to hold accountable the people who produce that medical literature. Yeah. The people who produce the medical literature themselves, you know, read other literature, maybe more basic literature, right? So, so they need to hold, you know, the, but right now there's no accountability at any step in, in, in that process. There's just, right. you know, right. a lot of funding and then a lot of regulation, you know, funding, you know, out the wazoo, millions yeah. of dollars of public funding and then, tons of regulations right. to, to keep us straight and, and uh, no, we should have competition and let the, the, the chips fall where they may. And if we end up, you know, if we're a, a society that, that uh, believes in, in uh, end up believing yeah. in, in the, uh, mag, mag, magnets, you know, uh, yeah. therapy with magnets oh. and whatnot, then yeah. so what? I mean, so be it. What can you yeah. do about that? You know? Yeah. There, there, there's, there's a nice, there's a nice chart. I don't know where he gets, he gets all, uh, John Tucker, uh, PhD is a, is a pharmacist in your, not pharmacist. Uh, oops. Oh, he, he will be upset with me uh, if I'm saying uh, that. He's a chemist. A medicine, a medicinal chemist. Yes. Yeah. He's, he's right. a chemist who, who, right. who has all these wonderful charts. And one of these, one of, one of my favorite <laughs> charts of his is, uh, is this chart of, uh, of, of progress in medicine or mortality or something like that. Right. And, it shows there's an arrow towards where EBM started, uh, and you right, can use right. you can yeah, yeah, whatever yeah. you want right. when the FDA started or whatnot. And right. you know there really seems to be no difference in terms of how Correct. progress. Correct. Yeah, there's no inflection point. I mean the you know yeah. the progress is uh, continues. Yes, Although yes. I so think it's, can... it's right, it's slowing down. I'm afraid it's actually slowing down. Because, yes, you know, yes, precisely yes. because there's a right. It makes you wonder that you know all these regulations, all these hoops right. that we now jump through. You know, I, I have a graph somewhere on my blog where yeah. it uh, the the CDC claimed a hundred years of public health success in cardiovascular right. disease. So right. going back to the 1900s, yeah. right? And, and, and then they show a, a stroke. So, so you have stroke mortality and stroke mortality, I, I don't know where they got the data from, but has been decreasing ever since 1900. Stroke yeah. mortality has been decreasing <clears throat> steadily. It's like a straight line. There's absolutely no inflection yeah. point. Yeah. Where in 1900, people had no idea about Right. Sure about, you know, about you know uh, yeah. about this you know the cardiovascular risk factors uh, yeah. you know people and people were uh, you know preoccupied yeah. with so right. yeah yeah there, there's um, uh, certainly a larger picture but the second the, the other the other point uh, is that are, are there not things that are uh, too heavy of a lift for society meaning obviously uh, building a, a b2 bomber mm-hmm. uh, or maybe maybe you think Otherwise, maybe do you think like the military, for instance, it, 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 are there things that are, are, are too heavy of a lift for all of society? Meaning, uh, whether it be the military, whether it be, and, you know, they would argue that the moonshots, you know, for so going, to, going to the moon. So did we need to all marshal our support and use tax dollars to get this massive amount of funding so that we could get to the moon and beat the Soviets? Like, I, would that have happened? No. Without, they, that have, how long would it have taken the private sector to say, all right, we need to go to the moon? But the, I mean, if the private sector showed no, I mean, if there was no consumer who thought that there was a benefit to going to the moon, the private sector would have said, no, I don't, you know, who cares about right, going to the right. moon? In fact, who cares? We've gone to the moon. I mean, are you, are you better off because we've gone to the moon? I, mean, yeah. I don't know. And, and all the billions of dollars spent on going to the moon yeah. 
could have been say, spent some other way. So, so really, it's, it's some guys saying, yes, we need to go to the moon, and everybody yeah. else, you know, having no say in the, in the matter. Right? Yeah. So, so it's really, it's anti-democratic. And I, it's anti-democratic. But of course, you know, we, we, at some level, there's a psychological benefit of, uh, as a nation, we've gone to the moon, all that stuff. I, I, I don't know. Yeah. I think, um, I think it's, um, it's overinflated. And no, you know, these are, it becomes, you know, we really uh, are, are going to, uh, you know, uh, uh, off topic here. Um, yeah. Uh, so I, think, I think we should, uh, these yeah. are complicated no, it's, title it's questions, great, but uh, great, maybe we will eventually, you know, uh, chip, chip at all these issues uh, one episode at a time. Yes. No, all no, right. No, anything no. else before we let Dr. Yanina? No, 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 yeah. No, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry for straying so far. It's all good. Again, the consumers of, of this show will, uh, will let us know if that was uh, <laughs> a good thing to do or not. Either way, we're doing this for ourselves. I am enjoying these uh, afternoon true. chats. That's true. <laughs> all so right. am I. All right, Anish. See you all right. Time. Thanks so much, Michelle. Thanks. Bye. Yep. Bye.